Video games have age ratings just like movies. This makes it a lot easier for parents to pick out games that are suited for their young children. However, there are a few weird examples of controversial content that somehow ended up in games aimed at kids. Here are 10 disturbing moments in family-friendly games. Banjo-Kazooie is one of the best platform games on the Nintendo 64. It's a world full of colourful locations and funny characters. This all changes when you meet the gigantic mechanical whale called Clanker. For some reason, he's completely covered in scars and even has a few bloody open wounds. You have to go inside him, which only makes things more disgusting. Seeing his nasty insides up close surely made a few kids uncomfortable back in the day. The Nintendo Wii game Captain Rainbow was never released outside of Japan. That's probably a good thing, because it has a scene that wouldn't translate well. In one of the missions, you have to prove to the police that Birdo is a female after they arrest her for using the woman's bathroom. You are then supposed to go into the bedroom of Birdo and look at evidence that proves that she is a girl. You'll notice a vibrating pillow with a censored item underneath. Good buzz. Take that item to the police and they will accept it as proof the owner is a woman. Yeah, that's something we never expected to see in a Nintendo game. Pokemon X and Y is a very kid-friendly game, with the exception of a mysterious ghost girl that managed to freak out players around the world. You need to enter a certain building in Lumio City and take the elevator. Here the music will stop, the screen will flash and a creepy girl will float by. No matter what, she will always say, no, you're not the one. No one addresses it ever in the game, which makes it that much more mysterious. It's a pretty disturbing moment in one of the most popular games on the Nintendo 3DS. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker is one of the kid-friendliest Zelda games ever made. The game even got a lot of hate when it came out because some fans believed that the cartoony graphics were too childish. However, this game actually has the most brutal death in the whole series. When you face the final boss, you are treated to one hell of an epic sword fight. Then comes the fatality. You jump up, thrust your sword into his skull. What a brutal way to finish a Zelda game. We played a lot of Lemmings as kids and saw every one of the game's 120 levels. These were all happy, colourful settings in which you had to lead your Greenhead army to the exit. Then came the level called Tricky 14, Menacing. It looked like the game suddenly transported itself to hell. The level is full of skulls and blood, making it feel very out of place in this otherwise kid-friendly game. It turned out this was a joke by the developers who recycled graphics from an earlier Amiga game called Menace. We guess you could get away with a lot back in those days.
Sound is a classic RPG on the Super Nintendo with a happy tone that brings back memories of school holidays and long summers. That's why the final boss seems so out of place. This terrifying being assaults you as a swirl of strange pixels and noises. This boss is based on a childhood memory from one of the developers. As a kid, he accidentally walked into an adult theater and saw images that scarred him for life. He called it a direct attack on his young brain and wanted to put something similar in the game. Mission accomplished, we would say. Luigi's Mansion is Nintendo's take on the survival horror genre. It's a bit darker in tone since you're hunting ghosts, but don't expect Resident Evil levels of terror here. However, there is one extremely disturbing moment when the power goes out in the mansion. In the telephone room, the lights will flash off and on, and that's the moment you will see something very disturbing. That's Luigi's shadow, hanging from the ceiling. It's unclear whether this hanging shadow is there on purpose or not, but it's a fitting scene for a game that's supposed to be one of Nintendo's creepiest titles. When you talk about disturbing moments in family-friendly games, you don't expect a Kirby game to show up. This game about a cute pink blob is pretty much the sweetest Nintendo franchise out there. However, Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards, has a very creepy boss called Zero Two. This fallen angel is the reincarnation of Zero, who died at the end of Kirby Dream Land 3. The boss sprays blood out of its eye when you shoot at it. The whole thing is just very disturbing and not something you would expect to see in a Kirby game. Surely Pokemon would never get scary a second time. That ghost woman we saw earlier in the video was just a one-time thing, right? Well, the series scared gamers again in Pokemon Red and Blue. Here you can visit Lavender Town, which has a giant structure dedicated to dead Pokemon. The creepy song gives it a real ghost town vibe, and you really don't want to spend a lot of time there. This place is one of the most undeniably off-putting places in an otherwise pleasant game. Did you know The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time had an ancient torture chamber full of horrors? It's hidden inside the well of the Kakariko village. When you enter it, you'll be greeted by some terrifying hands that will try and grab you. There's also a giant zombie-like monster that tries to eat you. Exploring this place can be scary. It's kind of disturbing to realize that loads of prisoners were tortured inside a well underneath a happy little village. Do you know other examples of disturbing moments in family-friendly games? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Ha 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 ha!